Hey friends, happy Monday. Today I'd like to make a video sharing with you guys what type of equipment I use for my vlogs. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Curtis and I run another YouTube channel with over 200,000 subscribers as well as a Facebook page, Instagram page. And this is the channel where I can just share like my diary and answer any random questions. So let's get to it. Hopefully uh, with this video, if you're thinking about starting your own channel, if you're already making videos and you want to up your game or just at least know what type of equipment that I use, I'm going to share my thoughts. So currently on this channel, I mainly use my cell phone. It is the Samsung Note 9. And the quality really depends on the lighting. A lot of times people ask me, how, how come today's video is much better? It might be because I'm outside, I'm getting sunlight. So sunlight plays a huge factor. For most videos, I think your cell phone would be sufficient if you're just starting out because you may not have the money to invest in a camera or a drone or stuff like that. So just begin with your camera. As long as you're starting, that's the most important. I can't get enough of like how important it is to just make videos. So over here, this is the main camera that I use for my other channel. It's Foo Love. The, if you want to check out the video quality there. For me personally, I don't go for the whole cinematic. Everything has to look amazingly perfect. I want to capture what's happening right now. What's real, kind of like a home video. Sharing with your friend or sharing with your uh, relatives of oh this is what happened yesterday or this was our trip to Red Island I I've just been editing that video right now and I want it to feel homey when it gets too professional I feel like it loses that YouTube touch because I like to make YouTube videos and it really gets to connect with people so this one G7X Canon before this I used a Lumix that one I didn't really like too much. I only used it for a little while because it was somebody else's. I just borrowed it. The color on this one I really enjoy because it doesn't really need much color correction. It's good for night mode as well. I mean, I wouldn't shoot way too much in the dark, but when the lighting isn't too well, this one can still handle its stuff. And another main thing I love is this front facing camera. If you're just starting out making videos, you're going to need this because you're not going to be able to well, unless you're very talented, uh, record your face. Imagine I'm making this video like 10 minutes long or five minutes long, valuable, valuable information or capturing this wonderful moment, but the record button wasn't recording or I wasn't recording what I wanted to record because I couldn't see. So this one, doesn't matter which camera you get, if you're just starting out, highly, highly recommend. Your front facing camera, hi Leon, she's just wandering around. Yes, this one is very useful. Also, the sound. I feel like for every video, the sound quality is super important. And for the most part, if you want to get to an advanced level, you'll probably want to invest in a camera where there is a microphone socket. For this one, there is no microphone socket, but I feel like the inbuilt microphone is enough for me because I'm not trying to capture the ultimate video. I just want to capture what's going on right then, right now plug and play. So sometimes something interesting is going on. Uh, this pet Leon is doing something amazing. She's talking and I want to record it right away because maybe she's only going to be talking for 10 seconds. So what I do is I grab this right out, hit the on button and I start recording. Bam, it's recording. But imagine I had all this equipment, I had to set up my lens, I had to set up my microphone, set up everything. That real moment is gone. So it really depends that what type of field you want to go for. If you want to go for a very, very professional, everything set up, movie-like, probably don't recommend my setup, but this is super convenient. I also use this tripod, mini tripod, hey dear. This one, I really like, it's the Manfrotto one because I everything about me is convenience. This one, instead of screwing the knob to adjust the angle, I just press down on this button, there. And I can adjust higher, lower, left, right, perfect. So it's perfect for grab and go blogs. It's perfect for these type of videos as well. I can just sit it up on the table, hit record, and bam, here we go. 
Okay, so I will also leave all of my equipment in the link in the descriptions below so you can find those. Next, I have uh, this GoPro 6. I actually don't use this very often, but I wanted a camera where I could go underwater because in the beginning I took my camera. I had an iPhone before this one and I took it into the ocean, which is a terrible, terrible idea. It worked for maybe the first one or two times, but there's salt water in the ocean. So it eventually broke. And then I decided to get this GoPro 6. It's waterproof. It's not meant for scuba diving, but if you're just snorkeling or you're playing a lake or you're playing in some areas where there's water splashing, it's perfect. I believe they have the 7 or the 8 now, but this one works for me. It's good for those wide angle shots as well, or if you want some time lapse. All around good for traveling. However, even before that, I made probably a couple hundred videos with just this camera. Highly recommend this one. So this is just if you want some water shots, different angles. And then next, I have my newest addition to my setup, which is this. A drone because I wanted to capture more of the settings. So let's say I'm in this area in Malaysia and when I want people to see what is this surrounding area like? It's for that wide aerial view. And it really ups the blog to the next level. I've really been enjoying these drone shots. So the one, oops. The one that I have is the Mavic Mini Combo. It is the cheapest one of the DJI drones. So for me, like I mentioned earlier, I got this one because of the convenience. It's very light, 249 grams, which means you don't have to register with the drone registration. I don't know, really know what that means, but it means it's easier to use. And for most places that allow drones, this one you can fly. Even indoors, it's okay if you're skilled enough. It came with some propellers so that if you hit something, it's safer. But for the most part, I don't use it. And this thing fits in the palm of my hand. It can even fit inside my pocket if I wanted to, which is why I love it. And the camera quality is good enough. It's probably not going to be good enough if you want to make some films. But for YouTube, I think it's great. Yeah, excuse my uh, pajamas, but I just wanted to show you. This thing would fit in my pocket. Not that I would recommend you put it in your pocket because it's probably better in the case, but it's just so tiny. Can go right in here and then it comes with a controller and three batteries basically you put your cell phone down in here you can see the view and then you can take some nice drone footage and of course the the cell phone that i'm using right now all right if you're just starting out don't stress out about the equipment i'm just sharing what i personally use right now and i've upgraded throughout Many years, it's probably been three years since I started filming seriously. So just the cell phone is plentiful. Uh, to get that into perspective of what I mean, equipment isn't everything. Some of my most popular videos on my other channel, which has hundreds of videos, is just really me sitting in front of the camera talking. I remember one I shared a story about my ex and then that one had a l hundreds of thousands of views probably millions if you include the facebook uh, views and also another one just me and my friend just having a chat and that one it's got millions of views too and i know some videos i put so much work into making it look great it's got some amazing scenery shots but it really depends on what the audience wants to see maybe it's not about the scenery it's oh well, yeah it isn't about the scenery. It's always about the story and the information that you want to share. So to get started, I would just recommend using whatever camera you have on your cell phone. Get used to speaking in front of the camera. I just made a video about speaking in front of the camera. I, you can watch that in the previous video. And that's about it for my equipment. It's gotten me through all of this and I have no complaints. I would maybe upgrade this if there came another camera that had a little bit better quality because it's been a couple years, but it kept the same convenience. I need it small. This is grab and go. I can fit this in my pocket as well because I'm a 
constantly traveling. So everything for me is convenience first. Yeah, that's it. Hopefully this video helps you out and gets you started. Remember, lighting is super important. Even if you don't have, even if you have the best camera, if your lighting is terrible, you'll notice that the quality is just so fuzzy. So a lot of times, if you're just on your cell phone, make sure if you have good lighting, see how everything is more crystal clear. But when the lighting is bad, the overall camera quality is just worse. So start out with natural lighting with the sunlight and make sure things are quiet around. That way it can capture your audio because if people can't hear what you want to express, what you're sharing, then they're just going to get distracted and click off. Hopefully that's beneficial for you guys. Remember, I will include the links to all of these items down in the description below. And that's it for today's video. Comment down below if you have any other questions or anything you want to just chit chat about or let me know how your Monday's going and drop a like if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Love y'all. Thank you so much for the support. We're almost at 1500 subscribers. Super happy here. Bye.